Hello, as you can now see the heater is nice and clean. Uh, it's actually uh, four days later. Um, I realized I needed to order some bits. So I'll just explain what I did before I put the heater back together. Inside, it was absolutely full of carbon. And the way I've cleaned it is to put a small amount of petrol inside and then using a toothbrush, uh, basically scrub it. Um, took quite a long time to get rid of all the carbon. Um, there was sort of a handful, sort of a fistful of carbon deposits inside, so quite a bit that I've removed. Around this face here, that's where the gasket goes, that, um, when I removed the gasket, the gasket fell apart, so I've had to clean that up very carefully. I used a, a flathead screwdriver and I've scraped it backwards along. It's really important that you don't gouge it, because otherwise um, you'll end up with some of the exhaust gases squeezing between the gasket and the housing and what you don't want is those coming out because then you're likely uh, to get the exhaust gases back in the van which is obviously quite dangerous so I've cleaned that surface I've also cleaned this surface up here and all the way around there again with the screwdriver and got rid of all of the, the deposits of the gasket again really important we get that nice and clean what did take a while was the burner and this is our burner here and inside here we've got a little a gauze in there. Mine's intact, but if that's broken then it's uh, essential to replace that. Again, the way of cleaning that is to pour some petrol in um, and then let that run through, um, let it sit in there for a while and run through, and then all of the, the black deposits have, have escaped from the end. I've also got a, a Q-tip, one of these things, uh, and I've used that to clean inside right down the bottom in there really important you get rid of all of the deposits in this part because if you've got anything in there it's then not going to burn cleanly and then you'll end up back to square one again fan assembly again i've cleaned this surface up here sorry out the camera clean this surface up here so the whole thing is all nice and tidy and ready to go back together i mentioned the gasket uh, i found on on ebay these gaskets are actually the same as the Urbis Fatcher ones. Uh, I paid £9 for the two of them. You can get them much cheaper than that, but I wanted to, to get the thing back in operation. I've seen them from China for, for less than half that price, so it depends how much of a hurry you're in. Okay, so it's now time uh, to reassemble the heater. We're going to put our gasket inside, like so. You can see a little cut out there. Make sure that that sits uh, nice and snugly in that corner. We can then put the burner assembly back in. We just need to make sure that this little uh, rubber grommet here is that way up. Okay, and then sit that inside the heater, making absolutely sure that this grommet sits over the groove. If it doesn't, and it's quite easy to get it in the wrong place, then you could get an air gap here and all of the, uh, the exhaust fumes, if this gasket failed, would then be straight into the van. And if you think about the way this works, the air is blowing across this heat exchanger. So if you get exhaust gases out of this hole or this hole, then it will go straight in uh, to the, the outlet inside the van. So very important. So we've got our uh, burner assembly lined up. Just need to move our gasket around a little bit because you can see that the, the screw holes aren't lined up. We'll do that with our, our Q-tip here. The easiest way to do it. Okay, and then we're going to get the uh, the shorter of the bolts, there are three of them. So we can put that in. We can then get our driver and we can then just get that one done up. Not up so far. Remember to reverse thread it until you feel the thread biting. Surprisingly tricky on this one. Still not going in. Have a look. Nine. Get that gasket over again. Definitely don't want to reverse thread these. In. There we go, that's gone in now. We won't do that fully tight, just so we've got a bit of movement. And do the other two. Final 
Now I've had a look on the internet, I couldn't find uh, any data for torque wrench settings, so I'm just going to do these uh, pretty pretty tight by hand. Pretty tight. But the reason that falls not on a crap casting, but equally you want to make absolutely sure that that is not going to leak. It's not like on a uh, diesel injection in, in, a, in an engine in a car. It's not under enormous pressure. It's only uh, effectively atmospheric pressure, isn't it? We've got the fan forcing it through, but there's no restriction uh, on the exhaust. So that's nice and tight. That should be okay. And one last time. Okay, there we go. So that's nicely reinstalled in the heat. So we've got our gasket there in position, which is good. Then we're going to get our glow plug. I just checked this over. There's no signs of any uh, damage to it. I know that it was working before I removed it because um, we we're getting the, the, the white smoke out, which means it was partially burning. I'm going to put that back in. And then we can do that up. Okay, and we'll get our 12 mil spanner. Let's get that on there. Get that nice and tight. Once again, that wants to be pretty tight. You don't want to crack it, but you certainly don't want it coming loose. And then we can get this grommet in. What I sometimes find is if you get a small screwdriver, you can just help that in the final bit, making sure that we don't cut it. I'm just going to get a screwdriver and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got our screwdriver and I'm just going to push that in there, making sure we don't cut through the rubber. You may well find that a plastic spatula is a little bit better. I'm worried about tearing it. Okay. Really important that that's in fully, otherwise uh, the exhaust gases can escape. So once we've got our glow plug all sorted, next thing we do is install the other gasket. So again, we've got a brand new one here. We're going to just turn that around. Uh, which way does it go? Going that way around, isn't it? There we go. Stick that on there, and then we can. Put the motor unit back on. Spin it around. Like so this is a, a metal gasket. It's actually slightly better than the old one, which was one of those fibre ones. So I'll put that in, and we're going to get the four bolts. Making sure we've got the washer on the end there. It's a locking washer, so keep it nice and tight. Opposite one. It's always good to do uh, diagonals. This one over here. Again, these want to be pretty tight because they are stopping the, um, the the gases. This shouldn't be exhaust gases here. This is only the air intake. But if there's a fault bit, then it would prevent 
the uh, exhaust potentially going into the van. So still take the motor gasket seriously. And I've got the final one over here. Okay, so there we are. It's now ready to be installed into the plastic housing. The reassembly of this bit is exactly the reverse of um, the parts and push that through there. And then making sure that the exhaust and the air intake are through the bottom. the motor cable up on the bottom there. Let's come there look. And then we are ready to install the electrical connections, electrical board back in again. We've got three connectors, we've got a four-way, three and a two, so you can't get them wrong. The, uh, the globe plug goes on the four. Let me have that soft camera there. And then the motor one goes onto the three. And then the temperature sensor goes onto the twin, onto the double one, which is over this side. Now this one you can actually get in wrong because it has two wires and there are uh, three pins on there if you look. I'll show you that there. Okay and there's a two pin so as long as these two are uh, on these two here then you're fine so just make sure you don't connect that third one uh, to this otherwise it won't work. Okay the first thing we're going to do is get our electrical connector put that back in the slot here tuck that down out of the way and then we can finally just put the motor the control unit back on. Now our circuit board's in place, it's time to get the last bolt in, so it's just going to go through there into the uh, burner. It's a bit tricky to line it up. This is a smaller bit, I've swapped that over. Do that one up. And then it is time to put the cover on. So nice and easy. Slots in this end. Okay. Put it into place. Put the end cap on. The air intake on. So, and then the important bit needs the gasket, which is this bit here. It's going to sit over there and go one way round. And then finally, once that's nicely seated, we can get the base plate. That's going to sit over there. Again, it can only go one way round. And then we have got our four nuts that we're going to put on there. Do these up. And while I'm doing those up, hopefully uh, this video has been useful to you. And if it has, please like my channel and keep in touch. Have a look at the other videos I've got. I've got the five kilowatt one on the boat. That one has had no problems whatsoever, uh, up and running perfectly. And this one, once it's put back in the van, I'm pretty confident it is going to work exactly as it has done for the past few months, which has been very, very good. I think the the reason um, that it coked out was because I had changed the minimum speed. So I think it's my fault. I slowed it down a little bit too slow. Uh, so we're getting incomplete combustion, hence the 
carbon build up inside the machine. And hopefully, once it's back in, I'll reset those settings, get them back to the factory defaults, and we should be fine. So, thank you.